The Senate Ad Hoc Committee on the Review of the 1999 Constitution has extended the submission of memoranda by two weeks. A statement from the Office of the Deputy President of the Senate, Ovier Omoagege, who is the committee chairman, indicates that memoranda would now continue to be received until September 25 instead of September 11, as earlier stated. It noted that the new deadline was in response to appeals by stakeholders from various parts of the Federation to accommodate those who requested for more time to bring their memoranda forward. Joining us to discuss this is legal practitioner Liboris Oshoma. Thank you very much for staying with us. Always my pleasure. Moved up by two weeks, starting today. Um, what's your reaction to that? A good thing or not so good? Yeah, a very good thing because um, um, we have been clamoring for uh, the uh, amendment of our constitution. Almost everybody, you know, in every corner of this country either know what should be included or what should be expunged from our constitution. It's almost like um, having an entire new, entirely new document. Even though some, a lot of people have made um, recommendations, you know, at um, uh, constitutional conferences. If you remember also the PRONACO conference and a lot of recommendations made. Um, also, the um, waste panel report on um, recommendations to INEC and, you know, all of that. So, to that end, um, I think we're even starting, you know, a bit late. I had expected that we would start almost immediately, you know, after um, uh, swearing in. That's in June 2019. But it's better late than never. But so, but there's need to actually extend time to accommodate a lot of interest. Uh, what would you say, what, what would you say to those? At each other's throat also. A lot of people, their agitations, you know, not south, east, and west. And then, you know, the earlier we extend time, you know, to accommodate all of these interests, you know, to assuage free nerves, the better for all of us. Well, what would you say to those who are fatigued and argue that constitution review has become like a ritual every four years and a waste of resources? Yeah, um, I will not, um, if do you see, you don't blame them. I won't sit down here to actually blame them because um, um, for once trust is breach, you know, it takes time for you to rebuild. And so over time, consistently, uh, the country and the political class have breached the trust of these people. You remember um, towards the uh, tail end of the last administration, that's the PDP-led uh, Gulag Jonathan's administration, we also went on a jamboree of um, a constitutional conference, um, and at the end of the day, nothing came out of it. Um, and you know, so uh, Obasanjo also had its uh, political conference, and nothing also came out of it. And so, you won't blame those people who are fatigued. But my only, you know, consolation and encouragement to them would be that if you truly love Nigeria, you know, there are people who will do everything to frustrate your good intentions you know, for Nigeria. And, and so don't, um, don't, don't get tired. Uh, uh, we need to consistently work at it. Uh, uh, it is by consistently working at it that the monkey learns to jump from tree to tree without falling. You, you, so, you, you, you mentioned uh, some documents, some efforts towards reviewing the Constitution. Um, what happened yeah. to maybe taking these documents and reviewing them? Because a lot of persons will argue as well that nothing new would be said from all the memoranda that is being brought forward, especially on a document that has military origin. We could as well, if we can't yeah. imbibe all this recommendation, we should as well move back to uh, 1963. I mean, that constitution. Yeah, um, while I agree with you to some extent, I agree with you the constitution is a, a schedule to decree 24. It was decreed into existence in May 29. Even most of the political actors, including Obasanjo, did not even see the document you know, that they were going to work with while they were campaigning for office. You know, the uh, Independent Electoral Commission at that time also, you know, just created guidelines. But be that as it may, um, I just said something which is very instructive. There is um, mutual suspicion, you know, amongst the various ethnic groups. And in, 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 
it would be unfair to any of these groups to just say, you know, why don't we take the PRONACO document or why don't we take the 9060 document? Some of them are going to still raise objection to the fact that they did not make impute into that document. Because the problem here is that we have been unable to agree to agree to a lot of issues. And if we can, no matter how incompatible we are, the only way we can move forward, like Dr. Nadi Azikiwe once said, is to agree to agree and agree to disagree. And I think one of the ways to agree to agree is to actually come together, allow people, bring in their memorandum, no matter how frivolous, no matter how stupid, and then the duty of, the, of those who are saddled with the responsibility of actually putting the document together to now begin to compare and contrast to say, oh, about um, 50 associations submitted a memorandum that is similar to what we had in the 1960 constitution. And so, because of that, we're going to take that section of the 1960 constitution with, you know, slight modification to suit today's end. But to just tell them not to submit memorandum because you feel in your own opinion that the 1960 or 1963 constitution or the PRONACO document or the constitutional conference resolution would take care of their, their interest would be, you know, shutting them out and resort back to what they have been complaining about. And so I think it is better to allow all interest come in and then you begin to weigh these interests against existing recommendations that we have. And like you said, you rightly concluded that you can bet it that most of those recommendations will not be different. But at least give them opportunity to make those recommendations. All right. Let's talk about body language then. Because the, the move to review this document is coming from the National Assembly. Um, certain events in recent times, from community policing to the air reply report that, uh, on restructuring that we're yet to see anything about, and the very recent water bill. People are saying all of these highlight um, points to that a review is not a top priority for the federal government and efforts by the Senate like this will be futile in the long run. How do you react? Um, it will um, also be foolhardy for somebody to sit down and say, because of the body language of Mr. President, uh, the pre body language of the present government, even though they campaign with all of those rec beautiful recommendations that their body language will not accommodate a constitutional review at this time, and so to that extent, that we should just fold our hands and not even attempt it at all. You know, not to attempt, it's, um, you know, it means we have failed twice. And then the way out of a problem is to even start, you know, to, to confront the problem. Let's even attempt the, those amendments. Let now know where the problems are. Because it is always very interesting when our presidents or our political office holders leave office and they begin to tell us, you know, the frustration, how they wanted to make things right, and the frustrations they, they confronted, you know, from their political associates, because we didn't try. But if we try, if we take those steps and we um, put it before them, we will now know, if they refuse to assent to it, we will now know where the problem actually is coming from. So tomorrow, you know, that same person would come and tell us, oh, I, I wanted to, but I couldn't. If you, if you, even the, some of the amendment, the alterations we have, you know, be, uh, had the sources of attaining re recently, if we hadn't tried at all, we would have attained them. Even the not too young to run bill. When people started, a lot of people were of the opinion that the body language of the government would not accommodate it. Even the amendment to the Electoral Act, some people also were of the opinion that the body language of the government would not accommodate it. But we did see that because of time, you know, the president objected to certain sections in the Electoral Act and also citing time for conducting elections. You know, if we had started early, that excuse probably wouldn't have been there. And so that is why I say it is work in progress. Democracy is dynamic. World over, you see them, the process that they used 20 years back, they would want to review and find a better way, better, uh, 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 an easier way of doing it. And, and so if now issues that were no problems before that were not confronting us, issue of true federalism in, 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 um, in the Second Republic in 1979 to 1983, federalism 
true federalism was um, a, a problem, revenue sharing. But it wasn't this, you, you know, um, confrontational. I remember some of the few cases that I went to court, Attorney General of Bender State and the Attorney General of the Federation, Abrusali and Co. But it wasn't this glaring the way it is today. And if you remember in 1999, um, the onshore-offshore dichotomy issue, you know, also was a question of, you know, uh, fiscal federalism. And now that the problem has snowballed to where it is today, I think it is the best thing for us to begin to look at it. Some persons just before the last election had said, if we do not go back to the 1963 constitution, that they were not going to be part of the election. And just recently also, I think some Yoruba elders also rose from, you know, uh, the caucus meeting and made those same recommendations. The leaders in the middle belt are also making similar re recommendations. Yes, they're talking about the middle, middle belt. Uh, we, we, we are time constrained, so I have to interject and bring this. Talking about the middle belt, they are seeking for a number of things. Uh, they're talking about federating units, additional states, devolution of the uh, devolution of police, change in form of government, and all of that. But there is one particular one I want to um, uh, pick your brain on. Uh, their request for the removal of the immunity clause, uh, barring uh, people from prosecuting prosecuting um, public officials um, for criminal uh, offences. Is that a likely review you believe will be entertained? Yeah, you see, because of our, our lack of trust and the fact that we have been so battered politically, you know, we also want to, we attempt some impossibility, you know, not considering, you know, uh, where we are coming from. And, and so... Um, you find out that the issue of immunity clause, what's the essence of immunity clause? Is to allow a public officer like the governor, the president, or the um, deputy governor, the vice president, you know, the opportunity to actually, you know, walk without having to look over his shoulders who is suing or who is not suing. Even among lawmakers that we have removed that do not have immunity clauses, how many of them have we prosecuted successfully? Lawmakers, even common councillors that do not have, you know, immunity. Uh, uh, local government chairman, how many of such people have we prosecuted successfully? And, and so that brings me to the fact that what we actually need is um, a reorientation about, you know, how governance should be run. And then also talking about the topic we discussed before, a transparent electoral process. When you have a transparent electoral process, you won't have to bother whether your, your um, ele elected officials have immunity or not because people will, you know, govern with accountability and transparency in mind. Once you have all of this, you will understand that our big problem now is really not whether there is immunity or no immunity, but the fact that we need a transparent process and we need to actually run, you know, the federation the way it should be run by, federal, it, 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 uh, by an entity called a federation. How many right. of us even bother to question our governors and our local government chairman as we speak? So we need, we truly, we need a, 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 an attitudinal change you know, to the way we perceive public offices. And All right, Mr. Shaba, we're really out of time. There's so much to talk quickly, about. Quickly, sorry. But we're, we're out so of time, Mr. Viable. Oshoma. We and are so out of time. What should we do to ensure the viability of this state? You know, so what is that issues we should be challenging our lawmakers on and not to further compound the problems? Thank you so much for your time and your thoughts. It's appreciated. My pleasure. My pleasure. All right, we'll take a short break and when we return, I'll be given my take. Now, there are those who believe that the Kaduna local government e-voting election experiment, though with its attendant titan problems, show we can hold free and fair elections. It will interest a lot of Nigerians if elections can be conducted promptly and smoothly, if we use less of the paper method and automate the process just a little. It would not only save money, but time as well. It all sounds like a dream from fairy tales. Agreed e-voting might not take us to the El Dorado that we want, but it is a sure way to start our journey there. How ready are we as a people, though? While most well-meaning Nigerians yearn for free, fair and credible elections, politicians, aided by some of us, 
simply want to win. Unfortunately, by all means necessary. We would like to address real issues beyond the internet. We would rather have to address real issues beyond internet penetration and voter apathy to even begin to scratch the surface of going to, towards e-voting. And that is my take. As always, thank you for watching. You can watch all episodes of Plus Politics on YouTube at Plus TV Africa. The program returns Monday, same time. Until then, please be well.